Wow, Globy, water sure is heavy. You can get a really good workout just lifting water. One gallon of water weighs almost four kilograms. That's over eight pounds, or as much as lifting two bags of flour or sugar at the same time. And did you know that over half the human body is water? We use water to break down food and get rid of waste. We also use water to transport food through the body. In fact, all living things need a regular supply of water to stay healthy. You have probably been told that you need to drink at least eight glasses of water every day. But we use water in lots of other ways as well. Think about how much water we use for showers, to wash our clothes, to flush our toilets, or to prepare our food. Most people in the United States use at least 302 liters, or about 80 gallons of water each day. That's a lot of water. Astronauts need to use water too. But all the water for the International Space Station, or for any future long-term missions, has to be sent up on a spacecraft, like the shuttle. Think about how much weight that must add to the spacecraft. The more the spacecraft weighs, the more fuel it needs, and the more expensive it becomes to send into space. Besides, water takes up a lot of space. If NASA wants to send astronauts somewhere for a long period of time, they need to bring an enormous amount of water to survive. Or would they? Since October of 2000, a full-time crew of three people has lived on the International Space Station. The ISS was built by several countries, all working together. Current NASA missions help add parts to the station that will make life a bit easier and allow an even larger crew to live there. As it turns out, the astronauts who live on the International Space Station are much better at conserving water than we are. Each astronaut only uses between 11 and 12 liters, or about three gallons of water each day. Still, the astronauts need a constant supply of clean water and oxygen on the space station to survive. One of the main challenges is trying to figure out how to give the astronauts enough water to use without allowing any water to go to waste. I have one word for you. Recycle. Monsi Rahman is the project manager for Exploration Life Support at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. She and other scientists are studying, testing, and creating life support systems that will help our astronauts live for extended lengths of time in space and on the International Space Station. This wonderful facility is actually uh, uh, the place where we bring people to come and exercise. This is the place where we collect all human metabolic loads, which mainly means we collect humidity from sweat and respiration. We collect humidity from food, because we cook foods in here too. We also bring to this area uh, water from urine and shower, shower water, any wastewater that is produced by humans doing hygiene, like brushing their teeth, washing their hands, shower water, all that. It's put together in, in this area. That's right. They're actually testing ways to use every bit of water on the ISS. And that even means changing a person's urine into water that the astronauts can drink. Now I know that may sound a bit yucky, but it's actually a very smart and very necessary way to help the astronauts survive. And the more drinkable water they have on the International Space Station, the more astronauts they can have living there. In fact, a water processor has just been sent to the space station, which will eventually allow them to double the size of the station's crew. Hi, I'm Tim Copra. I'm one of the crew of the International Space Station. Our station is currently orbiting 240 miles above the Earth and traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. You know, if you were to buy a bottle of water here, it would cost about $20,000. It takes a lot of rocket fuel to ship water and other supplies into space, and that's really expensive. So it makes a lot of sense to recycle our water and to use it over and over again. Below me is a system on board called the Water Recovery System, and it's connected to our water dispenser here. And that's what this whole device is about, about recycling our water. We use this to provide our fresh water on board space station. It's important to be able to recycle water, especially when we look forward to future missions to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The Water Recovery System, or WRS, cuts the need for delivery of fresh water to the ISS by about 65%. It'll recycle 6,000 pounds of water for every year. The WRS can recycle about 93% of the water it receives. Look at this. This is some drinking water that I got from our water dispenser from the WRS, and it's recycled. It tastes good. Another thing the astronauts need to conserve is oxygen. 
Everyone knows we humans need oxygen to breathe. Humans breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, or CO2. Currently on the International Space Station, that CO2 is collected and sent out into space. Today, scientists are looking for ways to recycle the CO2, pulling the oxygen from it so nothing goes to waste. Scientists aren't just working on recycling water and oxygen so astronauts can live on the International Space Station. NASA wants to continue to explore faraway places in space. In order to make that happen, our astronauts will need to rely on these recycling efforts. That also means the machines that change waste into clean water and clean oxygen will need to run for long periods of time without breaking down. And if they do break down, they'll need to be able to be fixed easily and quickly. Things do break. Uh, that will be one of our biggest. But the other thing is looking at alternatives as, as new things, you know, new technologies that are coming up that we were unable to look at when we started the design of the space station 20, you know, 25 years ago. Now we have other technologies available and see if we can inject those technologies into the technologies that we already know work and see how we can make them better. Things have already changed a lot since astronauts first went to live on the International Space Station. Hopefully through recycling, we'll be able to send future astronauts into space for really long periods of time. And the longer they can stay in space, the farther they'll be able to travel. But more importantly, just think what we'll be able to learn about recycling that we can use here on Earth. NASA technology could help us change the way our water treatment plants help make water safe. And we could learn a lot from the astronauts about water conservation. So the next time you're brushing your teeth, think about the astronauts and remember to turn off the faucet while brushing.